you suck at interviewing and you're not going to get any better. Oh, just kidding. Cracking the Coding interview is one of the best resources for learning. Um, I call it level one because it's a great start if it's been a while since you've taken a data structures class or slept through it the first time like I did. So go ahead and grab that in the link below. Oh, what's that? Also grab elements of programming interviews. It's a lot harder, but you'll be well prepared if you know it. Link in the description below. Okay, this is lead code number 621. It's called task scheduler. Um, given a list of tasks, which is just gonna be an array of characters. So it, like AAA, BBB, and a cooldown time which we'll call n, calculate the total execution time for in the best case. So what does this cooldown mean? Well, it's the cooldown between any two tasks. So you could set, you could have a b, for example, in a row, and that would be fine, and time unit one, time unit two. But you couldn't say a a. It would need to be something like a, cooldown, cooldown, a, cooldown, cooldown, a. And so we can actually kind of draw out what we want to have here. So we have our A's. We can write our B's down, I guess. And that's all our characters. So really, it's just eight. Because we only have to return the execution time. So how are we going to actually solve this as an algorithm? So let me just do walk through a few more examples, and maybe it will start to make sense. Um, say the exact same case, but the cooldown was zero. Still three A's, and I'm going to start writing it as this, and three B's. Um, what would it be? Well, our execution time would just be six, the length of the characters, because we could just say A, 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 B, B, B. That would be six. Another example, say we had three A's, three B's, um, one C, one D, one E, and a cooldown time of two. Well, um, it seems important to take, to use up our max items first, our most frequent tasks, because those are gonna be the bottleneck for the rest of everything. So um, rather than just say A, we'll actually say all of our Task with the max count, we'll say, okay, so A, B, blank, A, B, blank, A, B. And then we can start filling in the rest of the non-max tasks. So C, D, E. And as you can start to see in all these um, problems, the execution time, our result, really just make equals the number of characters we have. So um, I'll say number of tasks plus the idle time. We already know that. So we, if we could calculate our idle time, we could calculate our result very easily. Um, and I'm telling you, there is a way to do that. You don't actually have to, um, you know, have an, an auxiliary array and calculate this all out. You could, but there's a better way. So if we can calculate our idle time, we can calculate the result. Um, so you can, I can, I'm, there's ways to do this forward and backward. I'm going to just use an example and kind of walk through how I would go about solving this. So three A's um, and then B, C, one B, one C. Uh, n equals 2. And I'll just write it out. So it seems important in all these examples to keep track of the max, right? The max frequency. And it also seems useful to, in the first place, turn this list into a frequency count. So um, maybe a map, mapping a character to its frequency in the interval. So that's an idea. Keeping track of the max frequency is a good idea. And then also for these examples where there's multiple maxes, so like 3A and 3B, 
Um, it also seems to be useful to calculate how, uh, how many maxes there are, and I'll call that max count. So in this case, it's three. There's only one of them. But if I were to say 3D, then there would be two max counts. Um, but ignore that for now. Think of everything be as uh, either maxes or non maxes. So, um, you know, our maxes are going to be spaced out as tightly as they can, and in between, we'll have blank spots for the rest of them. Um, so, let's see. What? How could we go ahead calculating the idle time? Well, already we can see we have a certain amount of idle time. Um, so why don't we why don't we just use some variables? We could call this the um, the number of blank sequences, for example. Blank sequences. How many of those do we have? Well, if we have uh, whatever our max is, we're gonna have one less than that. So that that's that. And then our blank sequence length, how long are those? Well, at the most, it's going to be the cooldown, right? One, two. But if we have any other characters, like say it was 3B also, we would have something like AB, AB, you know. So really, we want um, N minus one less than the max count. Why this? Um, for max count is one, and n equals two, so then we would just have a uh, max count minus one. That's a minus one. Um, then we would have a blank size of two. Um, in this case, we have two maxes. Our max count is two. Our cooldown is two. Our uh, Blank se or, or blank sequence length would be one each. So from there we can calculate very easily the total number of blank spots. In other words, the total amount of empty slots for non-max um, characters or tasks. So if we just multiply these two together, we can get the total number of empty slots. We'll say that times two together. So we're close. We still need to get to idle time, right? So how do we get to empty slots to idle time? So if we know how many non-max tasks we have, we can just fill those in the blank, in these blanks, and we know how many blanks we have. So we could say um, available tasks. Um, equals however many tasks we have minus our mass task. Basically all our non-max tasks is what we want to do. So that would just be, um, I'll just say like number of tasks minus um, max times max count. These are just the number of max characters we have. So that would, now that we know the amount of empty slots, the amount of empty characters, or non-max characters, we can just fill those in, calculate the idle time, and calculate the execution time. So our, our total idle time is just going to be um, our empty slots um, minus our available tasks. Our result is just tasks plus idle time. Let's go through an example. Three A, three Bs, one C, n equals two. So What's our max? It's three. Max count is two, because we have two maxes. Um, what, do we, what do we have? How many blank sequences? And I'll just write this up here. A, B, so 
how many blank sequences we have. We know we have two, but it's really the max minus one. So three minus two is one. So blank sequences, we have two. How long is each sequence? N, which is two minus max count minus one. That should just be one, and that rings true because each of these are one. So blank, seek, length. Uh, empty slots. These two times together, so that equals two. Rings true, there's two empty slots. Our available tasks are all our non-max tasks, so we know that's gonna be one, but we'll calculate it with the total amount of tasks, so seven. So avail tasks seven minus six equals one. And then uh, from there we calculate the idle time, empty slots, two minus available tasks, one, so that's just one, which makes sense because this fits right here and we only have one idle slot. And then our result just equals our idles plus our characters, which is eight. And that looks to be true. So let's, how, let's see how this looks like in code. All, and I'm, I'm pretty much directly translating what I have on the paper onto into code, so. Oh, one sec, there's a squirrel on our trash. Get out of here! Scram! Get the fuck out of here! Okay, I'm back. <laughs> um, so, what, <laughs> what, what, what are we doing? So, uh, let's build up our frequency graph, or frequency map first. So what is it? I'm just gonna say it's a character array. Um, call it freak. Get freaky. Um, and so the you know the very carrot at zero, that's just gonna represent a capital A. I'm kind of banking on um everything being on a being a capital, you know, alphabetical character. What other variables did we have? We had our max and our max count. I'll just set those to zero. And then we build up our map. So really just care task and tasks. Um, we want to sit those, whatever fruit, like that value is, we want to increase that. So really our task minus A, this will get us a zero for capital A, for example, and one for capital B. Um, we just want to increase that by one. And then how do we keep, how do we update these max and max counts? Well, anytime there's a new max, max count will be one. Um, and anytime there's the new max, anytime you increase and that value is equal to the current max, max count will increase by one. So I'll do that one first. So if uh, this value right here, um, if that equals the max, then we just have another max count. In the other case where um, it's greater than the max, then we only have one max count, and we have to set our new max. Max equals freak at. And the other implicit case, uh, if whatever value is, it's less than the max, we'll increase it the frequency, but we don't have to update either of these variables. So now that we've built out this freak, freak map, um, let's just do what we did right here. So um, number of blank sequences. Uh, and blank sequence. That was just max minus one. Number of blanks in each sequence. And uh, blank sequence length. That was just n minus max count minus one.
Uh, and also these these comments are pretty important, I would say. Like this this question's not it's not very obvious as to what each of these variables talk is talking about, so comments help a lot, as you may be learning right now. Um, total empty slots just equals the last two multiplied together. What else do we have? Uh, how many non-max tasks are available tasks? So and then we also need our total total amount of idle time. What is our result? Just our task.length plus our idle time. All right, so that was a bunch of typing, but let's see if it runs. I am aware of one bug in here already. Um, let's see how it goes. So it looks like it passes for this sample test case, which is, uh, which is good. Looks like it fails for this case where um, three A's, three B's, and uh, no waiting time. So, what is going wrong? So, it looks like there's zero empty slots and zero available tasks. Let's debug this case. Let's see what's going on. Uh, debug. Just see all our variables right here. So we can see our idle time is actually negative, which is not what we want because that should be at the very least zero. And this is happening because our blank sequence length is negative one for some reason. Um, none of these really matter though if we have, so in the case that we could do this, I guess we could fix this two ways. We could say if n equals zero, we just return the task dot length. Or we could say our idle time it's not going to be negative. Let me try both of these solutions because I'm not actually sure which one will work. Um, so if n equals zero, return. Let's see if that fixes it. I don't think it will, but yeah, see, what's this case? So I'm going to go back. Let's, for this idle time, let's just make sure that it's, at the very least, it's zero. And it looks like that one fixed it. I think what can happen when you have, um, I think this available, ta there can be more available tasks than empty slots, um, you know, when things have to pile onto the edge and in that case, there's there's technically negative idle time, and that it's going to take longer than our initial um, amount we slotted for. But we don't want to add that on, so um, that would that would double count our task. So this is the uh, this is the task scheduler problem. This runs in um, one pass uh, in constant space, and you're not going to get much better than that. So there you go.